Hello, and thank you so kindly for tuning in to my station, Brown Eyes, on this beautiful, beautiful, amazing, truly amazing day today. Remember, so as a man thinketh in his heart, then so is he. That's right, brothers and sisters. We think upon things that bring a good report. We're thinking that today is a beautiful, blessed day today. So indeed, indeed, it is a beautiful, beautiful day today. Well, today, oh, today, today, we're going to call it today is Flashback Thursdays. We're going to reminisce today. We're going to reminisce on the, the days behind us, the days of past, and um, kind of reminisce on some days that were a little, a little bit more simpler. Uh, I guess when you don't understand a thing, uh, you kind of live in your ignorance, and I guess your ignorance to a degree kind of shelters you. Uh, and in that ignorance sheltering you, um, you know, you don't re really know the reality that you're living in. So growing up, it was a carefree time uh, for the majority of us because, you know, like I stated in previous videos, I am a 71 baby. So I grew up in that era where, where it was like a... Uh, with disco and uh, the bell bottoms and afros and the, you know what I'm saying, uh, the, the make love and peace and not war type of era. And so um, I just remember growing up and the days were a little bit more simpler and, uh, you know, it wasn't as uh, chaotic and uh, busy as it is today. You know, this technology today keeps you busy. It keeps you, your attention distracted. There's always something to grab your attention in today's time and with the technology of today. But back then, growing up in that era, we didn't have all of the technologies that we have today. And we made it out just fine, didn't we? I mean, when I was growing up, we didn't have the uh, the cell phones. We would, we would be, like I said, we would be blessed to have a house phone, let alone a cell phone. Like everybody, I mean, even children, even babies pretty much have cell phones or access to them, uh, let alone the, uh, the, the the video games, the computer. It, you know, the, the Internet is just, uh, it is a vast, it is a, a major thing that can reach the masses of people. So uh, it, it's good, but I guess I guess too much of any good thing can be, can turn out to be kind of bad for you, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, when we grew up, we didn't have the cell phones. We didn't have any phones. We had each other. And uh, we didn't have all the fancy toys either, you know, because most of my friends, their families couldn't afford things like my family couldn't. So we, what we did have, well, we had access to, to ropes or, or cords. So, you know, we put them ropes and cords together, honey, and we have us a good old uh, double Dutch thing going on, you know. We say, I'm first, I'm second. <laughs> and we would play for hours and hours and hours, and we wasn't worried about anything. Only thing we knew is that we had to be home before the street light came on, and we looked out for each other. We were like, okay, I'm going to walk you halfway, or are you coming over here? I will meet you halfway. You know what I'm saying? We, we, were, we were much more uh, together. We, we were more of a community uh, growing up then. Uh, you know, we knew things about each other. Uh, our parents knew each other. They, they spent time together. We just knew each other as a community, and we looked out for each other like that. So you very seldom he heard about anything uh, too much happening to to, to people back then. I'm not saying it wasn't happening, but uh, where I was at, uh, I didn't I didn't hear too much of it because we were doing the kitty things. You know, we, we, we would do the jacks. You remember the jacks? You get the little ball and you get like seven little pegs, little sharp pegs, and um, you have to throw the ball up and hear it and catch the peg. And uh, every time you go to one, you just go in order. The second time you go two, three, four, five, six, seven, till all, till, uh, you get them all and you have to throw the ball up and catch them all. I mean, it sounds so simple and just weird now but those are the things that we take for granted today because those things were cheap inexpensive because guess what if we lost those sharp pegs all we had to do was go outside and round up some rocks that's what we did and we kept the jack game going right along you hear me <laughs> we had a big deck of cards and what did we do with those cards we played the matching game we would spread all of them out and just turn them over. I mean, we had so many uh, inexpensive, innocent things to occupy our times growing up. We wasn't sitting all in the house watching TV then because we didn't, you know, I don't think we had cable. We didn't know nothing about no cable. We was lucky to have an antenna to get the stations. You hear me? <laughs> but times were so much more simpler then. And, and, and we didn't know. I mean, of course, we wanted things better, but we were happy with, with, with the simplicity of growing up because... All of the people around us had pretty much the same thing we had, which was pretty much little to nothing, but we had each other. And so 
we always hung out in groups. You remember that we when we went to football games and uh, basketball games in the community, the, the, the community kids went to the same school. We would walk together. It was something of a unity. It was understood, you know, that we're going to do this, and we all stick together, and it was so fun. And uh, we didn't have cars then. You know, we'd be lucky if, if, if a parent had a car. You hear me? So what we did was we sat on the front porch, and we was just as happy, and we act just as silly, but it was just as innocent with nobody trying to kill nobody, with nobody trying to rape nobody. In fact, I can recall growing up innocently as a child uh, doing a good old uh, dry humping thing. Uh, oh, now don't you act like you have never heard of dry humping. Well, honey, let me break that dry humping down to you since you're trying to act like you <laughs> forget. You know what I'm saying? Because dry humping, honey, was back when you didn't have to, you wasn't even exchanging any types of fluids or moisture whatsoever, honey. Your, your clothes stayed on and his clothes stayed on. So I'm talking about you was about seven, eight. I mean, hey, don't judge me. Just, I'm just keeping it real with you. This is reminiscent time. We're talking about growing up and all those things like that. Not the kids today. They actually penetrating, honey, and doing oral sex, mind you. So we're going to talk about back in the day when it was innocent. We was doing the dry humping. I uh, don't think we probably would have got was chafed because we was all the friction with the clothes on. Wasn't no moisture in there to lubricate nothing because we wasn't, we wasn't, we, <laughs> now we, we was bold enough to do the dry hump, but we wasn't ready to, to take no clothes off and, and make no skin, touch no skin. Now, you hear me? But it was innocent. You hear me? And even if we dared kiss, it wasn't no such thing as putting your tongue in my tongue, you nasty little pissy tail boy, as my mama used to call you. You keep your tongue in your mouth, and I'm going to keep my tongue in my mouth, and we're going to just rub our lips together. <laughs> And we're going to go for it. This is our thing called kissing. And that was the extent of the intimacy growing up in the innocency. You hear me? But, of course, today, you know, uh, at those age, they're actually doing the penetrate. Those, most of the, the younger generation are having sex at a un, un, unimaginable early age. And, and you know, they're, they're defiled and their innocence is being robbed from them at such an early age. But, but you know, growing up then, you know, we didn't have to worry about those those things. I'm not saying that they didn't exist. And, and uh, you know, I think a lot of times uh, we just we knew how to uh, d defend ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Because we just uh, we just. We just was a community of innocent children that, you know, we stuck together. We stood stood together, and so by us standing together, uh, we 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 really wasn't afraid of anything because, you know, there is um power in numbers, and as a community of children, we stood together. So um, you know, like these children today, you know, uh, they off somewhere in the corner somewhere, all on. Facebook meeting some stranger they don't know nothing about and meeting this nut off somewhere and something happening to him. We wasn't doing no crap like that. You a lie. If anything, nigga, we're going to see you at, at a game or you'll come by my house with all the rest of the hood. Uh, school kids, wasn't no fight. And everybody respected each other because your mama wasn't going for that. We respect your mama. We called your mama Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. And we knew that we had to respect your house. We had to, uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and that went a long way. We respected one another. We grew up respecting one another do you hear me and even if we fought one another we lived to make up and to fight and to be friends another day we did those things but this generation uh i don't think they know anything about the the in between you know what i'm saying it's, it's a either or a or with this generation and that is a uh that's 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 very bad but um everybody's not going to be that way and you know we have to choose what our reality is going to be and uh but growing up uh our reality was very uh innocent and wholesome even with very little do you hear me even with very little it was still an amazing experience to grow up because we didn't have anything so we depended on the, the basic necessities and and you know as, as black people growing up we have always learned how to make the best out of any situation you hear me we are trained is something built in us, a built-in mechanism, if you will, that, that regardless of what type of situation we find ourselves in, we can always find some type of peace, joy, and a smile, or crack some type of joke to make light of it in order for us to continue fighting, you know, whatever it takes. Sometimes you have to, you know what I'm saying, sometimes you have to, and I, and I started, I remember seeing this little part in, um, I think it was Hustle and Flow. And uh, I remember this little part when the, the little white little prostitute was in the car with the, the, the uh, Howard, I forgot his name, and they was in the car, and uh, he was trying to get in her head, you know what I'm saying, because he needed her to turn this trick, and uh, she said, you know what, she said, I know when you fucking with me, I know when you fucking with my head, and she said, right now, I don't need you fucking with my head, you feel me? <laughs> so a lot of times... Uh, we was getting fucked with our head and didn't didn't even realize because we was all on the same level. But uh, now growing up, 
it's just uh you know it's, it's just a whole nother ball game and you can't even approach these kids now do you even want to you feel me because now these children think that they can sleep with adults now because it's so messed up now because you got teachers sleeping with children and and uh everything is just so defiled now you know i'm talking about an innocent child that you would not dare look at look at this child in any other way but as a child that he is but you got little girls who are half dressed and throwing themselves at teachers or and they might not even be throwing themselves but i believe a lot of them are because we're in the era where the innocence is gone and these girls are so provocative now you know what i'm saying with the foods that they're eating they're developing way too soon and, and it's at, at, a, at an unhealthy rate as well as the boys because you remember the males are, are are growing boobies now because they're eating at mickey d's and all these fast food, food restaurants with all these uh synthetic uh, hormones and all these things that are that are working against our bodies instead of for us. So uh, anyway, uh, I, I know I'm kind of getting off. I, I even lost my train of thought, but getting back on topic of reminiscing back in the day, um, a lot of times we didn't have food. A lot of times my neighbors didn't have food, but we made the best of it. Let me tell you what my mama did. Now you could tell when the good food was leaving and stuff like that was because when you uh, you know when you get the food. It, at the beginning of the month, you got your pantry is full, your refrigerator is full, you got the clean towels, you got the soap, you got the tissue, you got all those good things, you got the chips, you got the cookies, you got the milk, you got the cereal, you got all those things. But, oh, as the days go by and time start going on and, and, and you know, because we, we weren't going out to eat as children. I don't know about y'all, but we couldn't afford it. We was lucky to get food on the table, let alone going to any type of restaurant. It was it was a, a it had to be an extreme good celebration time or somebody really had some money in order for us to go to a fast food restaurant even mcdonald's as a child was expensive for us you know so we had to eat at home a lot which was good but uh because my mama cooked all the time but uh when the food started going down then she had to resort to the canned goods now come on come on my brother now let's say all you got is a can of vegetable soup or, or, or a can of vegetables vegetables a pack of a bag of potatoes uh a, a, a little uh cornmeal uh you know what i'm saying a little pinch of this a little pinch of that i tell you by the time my mama got through she would have the house smelling so good with a big old pot of whatever she had in that refrigerator and cabinet. Do you hear me? And she always had a big pot of it. Now, it may not be some stuff that we would generally want as children. What do we know? But, hey, it kept us from going hungry. I'm telling you. And it was really better for us. Now, growing up as an adult, seeing a bullshit that's fed to us and that we're eating now, back growing up then was really the real time where, you know what I'm saying, you was getting some of the, the real essence of of nature and what what it uh what it can give you and the benefits from it because you know we grew up pretty 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 healthy i believe i'm not saying that I, you know in fact i know that the whole world is a sick ass world from the things that have been forced on us and by our own uh style of living you know lifestyle and all those things like that but uh still you know what i'm saying i still think that uh my generation grew up uh fairly healthy uh considering now the things that you know that that they were doing to you that you did not know about and things you were doing to yourself out of ignorance but uh um reminiscing i think that uh i think that we don't digress excuse me we don't backtrack we don't live in the past but i think that it's okay to take any good thing that's going to help you in the now so if you're living in a now and you just so happen to reminisce and you find a good thing in the past that can motivate you to uh be happy and, and, and to just be thankful or be grateful of uh of a better person that you are or you know the, the the time that you were allowed to have in that in that past with that person at that moment because those are memories that we take so for granted. You know what I'm saying? Remember those things that, that people are dealing with uh when they're when they're uh losing their train of thinking like all timers and dementia and those things like that. We take those things for granted every day because we just we're living in the now and we don't think about that things can happen. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that things will happen. I'm just saying if we can always think about things that bring a good report and if we rem reminisce and can be in control to a point where we can only reminisce on the good things or if we just so happen to dwell too long and get some bad things that we can uh, uh, counter counter use that and reiterate that in a positive way so that we're not always feeling bad about things that we have no control over i guess that's pretty much what i'm saying i know i'm saying a lot but still it's gonna make sense at the end of the day you know <laughs> so we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves because um although we grew up in an era where i think that love was really spread uh or could have been uh i think that now we can make our reality a beautiful one i think that we can uh reach out uh in love and um Try to live in the moment in a positive way and constantly see the good in everything because it is. You know, you may have to look harder or maybe you should take, maybe we should take ourselves 
out of things and then look at things and maybe we can see things better, you know, or if we're constantly looking in the mirror and looking at ourselves to constantly clean ourselves up from the inside out, then I don't think we will have time to uh, tear up anybody, tear down anybody, or just, um, you know what I'm saying, create any type of negative vibes that would j just be like a boomerang and come right on back to you, you know, so uh, yesterday is Thursday, a little reminiscing, uh, you know, a little up and down with it, uh, had a couple of thoughts I wanted to share as usual because uh, when I think about a lot of things in my in my past, uh, because I can think about the good things and I have the choice, and that's a good thing. Now, I know that I have the choice to think about the good things or the bad things of my past, and uh, a lot of the bad things in my past, uh, I, it does not affect me in a negative way any longer because I know that I do not have to live in that. I do not have to be under that uh, spirit of uh, wh whatever it is that, that that is not benefiting me, and you can as well. And it's as easy as thinking upon things that bring a good report. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're thinking on something that, that's, that's, that's bringing you down, then that's not the thing you should be thinking upon, is it? Because I know I don't want to be sad, honey. I want to always be happy. I want to always be the life of the party, honey, which I am. And I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just talking about I want and I'm striving constantly to keep my energy in such a positive, high vibrational way that when I meet people, I can let some good loose and I can receive some good. That's all I'm saying because that's all what it's about because if you're not letting go some good and receiving some good, then what else are you doing? Then that means that you're letting go bad and you're receiving bad. Then that that means that that's what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? If you're giving bad, if you're not, it's either one or the other. Either you're gonna uh, fulfill and nurture the good that you can give and receive, or you're gonna fulfill and nurture the bad that you can give and receive. And I don't wanna deal with the bad. You know what I'm saying? We don't even get along. You feel me? I moved and I changed my locks so back and gone on somewhere else because I am not feeling bad. You feel me? <laughs> but having said that, um, uh, just just continue to think about things that bring a good report. Um. Exhort yourself, honey. Love yourself. Build yourself. Do the things that keep a smile on your face first of all before you try to find someone else to bring a smile on your face, honey. Because if you're always looking for somebody and depend on somebody to make your day, you might be disappointed because they may need you that day. You know what I'm saying? So uh, try to be in a servant uh, service position because when you're in a service position, man, you you don't have, you don't have any expectations. That is, I mean, and, and, and I know I'm rambling, but I'm just saying it's it, it's it's so rewarding and so fulfilling when you set yourself in the servant seat instead of sitting yourself in the boss quote unquote boss's seat or the or the teacher's seat all the time. You feel me? Sometimes when you're behind the scenes and you lay low, baby, that's the best reward you can get because your stuff is happening spiritually for you while you're doing the things openly, not not expecting anything. You're doing it because that's who you are. You feel me? I think that is such a good rewarding way to be and to think and to live because when you're not expecting anything and you give selflessly because you would want someone to do it for you because you've been there before and you know how it feels to receive something unexpected out of love when you was having such a, a ugly day. You know what I'm saying? And you make somebody's day like that and you're not expecting nothing, but you get you get you get such an emotional high giving. Oh my God, that is that is so exhilarating. It is so amazing and awesome because it lifts your frequency up because you've you've helped somebody and you know you 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 put a smile on somebody's face and you don't have a clue what they was going through and you you'd be surprised. Everybody going through something. It's just that some people can can carry it better a little bit weller than others. Some people are learning to either hide it or some people are learning to uh not let it bother them a little bit better than other people. That's all it is. You you feel what I'm saying? But at any rate, we're all good people here. We're all truly amazing in our own right uh, it's okay to love each other it's okay to be yourself and be different from everyone else and it's also okay to love people in spite of how they treat you honey because you in control of yourself ain't you we're we're in control of our reality because so is a man thinketh in his heart so is he Thank you once again for tuning in to Miss Pretty Brown Eyes today. Yeah, I added the pretty with Miss Brown Eyes today on this beautiful, beautiful throwback reminiscing Thursday once again today with Miss Brown Eyes today. I ask that you like, subscribe, perhaps leave me a comment. Let's interact. Let's talk about some stuff. I don't mind talking, you know, because I can talk. Can't you tell? <laughs> At any rate, thank you so much for tuning in. I will talk to you another time. Bye.